Hello and welcome back to the Rope Access and Climbing Podcast, YouTube edition. I am your host, Mikey Stevenson, and today we are talking about how to rig large Y hangs. If this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. So stay tuned. Step into your harness and get ready for a podcast about the vertical world. All right, well, let's dive into today's episode. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. So today we are talking about how to rig up large Y hangs, and this is anything greater than 1.5 meters. Now, the same rules will be applied if there is a hazard on a small Y hang, but we'll dive into that here right now. So. I have a large Y hang rigged up right here. So I have two bolts, two carabiners, obviously two different color ropes here, two bolts, two carabiners. Obviously they could be slings up there or whatever you have that you're physically rigging to the anchorage with. Okay. Now this is one of the, you know, token Y hangs that you're all familiar with. It is essentially the small Y hang, just bigger, right? Now, where I was talking about with a small Y hang, you only need one bolt, one carabiner on either side. Unless there's a hazard, then you have to double up the rigging. Okay, so diving into this, how we're gonna build this, let's check that out. All right, so for this exercise, I'm gonna be using two different uh, color ropes here. Uh, this is to help you on the visual perspective see what is actually happening. Now, I am going to tie these with figure eights on a bite. If you're new here and you haven't checked out the level one knots video, I'll link that up in this top corner. So one figure eight on a bite here and another figure eight on a bite here. Now, you can use figure nines. It's entirely up to you or your company policy. Check with your subject matter expert with the company. Okay, excellent. So I have those. Great, excellent. Now, I'm gonna clip them on one at a time here. If you have the ability to load share, please do. Um, in this configuration, it would make it very challenging, but we want to load share where, wherever possible, okay? All right, so now I have those ropes there. I need my ropes here in the middle and my other bolts are up here. What am I going to do? Well, I'm gonna tie an alpine butterfly. Great. So if I tie it like this, and then clip it in, well, that's actually worked out pretty good, but then I'm spending a lot of time adjusting, okay? So what I want to do is kind of, you know, help myself out a little bit. I'm gonna make my first loop, okay? Then I'm gonna kind of hold this where I want it to go. I'm gonna extend that to where it's supposed to go. Excellent. I'm gonna add a little bit more rope to compensate for the knot itself. All right. I'm gonna make my second loop, feed this all the way through, holding these here, hold those right where they were, pull this through. And this is going to get you close enough where I can make just small adjustments. That looks all right. Cool. Next up here is the same thing, just with the other rope. Go to the next bolt, add a little bit more rope for the knot, pull this through pinch that X that's in my palm, pull this through here. And there's my large Y hang. Now, I do notice in training that a lot of people don't spend a lot of time adjusting alpine butterflies, okay? This can be a challenge for a lot of people, so spend some time, play around with alpines. This is a good place and a good time to do that skill. All right, so for the next variation, um, yeah, 
probably gonna get some uh, hate mail from this one. So let me know in the comments below what you think about it. But all right, so here we have the next Y hang. I have two bolts, two carabiners, two ropes feeding into a BFK. Okay, and then those same ropes feeding out into the two bolts and the two carabiners here. Now, the nice thing about this, okay, unlike the other one, is if any single point on either side fails, okay, nothing happens here. We've created a centralized focal point here that I'm hanging here and one of these lines fail, okay, you're not going to swing to whatever side that may be, okay? This is something that I'm really, really, really liking right now. And a lot of people will be like, oh, that's lazy, it's dirty, it's not professional. You can say what you want, okay? Um, but when it comes to your safety, this could be extremely important. Now, where that comes into play and where this is very important, okay? Yes, it's important in the vertical when you're rigging up like this, but say that you are on a roof, okay? And I have to rig my Y hang and I have to go over the edges. Great, we're all familiar with, you know, window washing and building maintenance here. So now if I have my fancy little piece of rope protection here, that's awesome. But if one line fails, this rope here is going to come to here and then down and your rope protection is going to be down here somewhere and that rope is going to run all along that edge, okay? Extremely, extremely, extremely dangerous, all right? You have rope protection there for a reason. You don't want the damn thing to move. Now, by rigging up this, Okay, if this is doubled up at the same point, if any one of these lines fail, this person may feel a jolt in the system vertically, but because you're connected at the central point, this person will just stay right where they are. They're not going to be in a position of, of that pendulum swing. So. Yes, in a vertical orientation, you can obviously see that this is a positive uh, thing. In a window washing, a building maintenance situation, this is where it's probably more critical, okay? Now, with the situation that we have here, where I have a wall here and a wall here, any one of these lines fail, you're gonna drop, you're gonna pendulum to wherever that line was anchored. So this is anchored here, you're going, to, you're going to swing heavily into that wall. And that potentially could be, you know, very painful and, and cause a lot of injury depending on what you hit, all right? So if there's a potential of injury due to a pendulum, this is something that you're definitely wanting to look at, all right? Now, let's dive into number three. All right, so option number three is for a vertical setup, um, unlike the last one where you could use it for a vertical or kind of horizontal building maintenance side of uh, things. This one's strictly for vertical, but uh, a great alternative option. So let's dive into it. All right, here, I don't know how well you can see the bottom here, but what we got going on is two bolts, two carabiners, two knots coming into a BFK and Please feel free to leave a comment below what you think of the BFK. Coming back up into two eights, two carabiners, two knots. On the other end of the eights, we're coming down into a re-anchor into two figure eights, two locking carabiners with opposed gates, and then down. So that's what we have. Now, why is this good in a vertical uh, orientation or vertical situation? Well. You know, they're hard to rig. Large Y hangs, depending on where you gotta go, they can be very problematic and very challenging to rig from time to time. So what this does is gives one termination point and then it gives your ability to get over to here, set these knots where you want them, and then 
when you start coming down, you can kind of trim yourself onto this line, make your re-anchor, and then proceed down. So all you do is just climb through this instead of that awkward transition coming down through the Y hang, which no one should be doing that anymore. That is something that we used to do way back when, but the rescue plan out of a situation like that is horrible at best. So this definitely eliminates a massive problematic situation with the rescue. Okay, so let's dive into how I rigged this up. All right, so this is our third option here. Um, this is a <clears throat> midpoint uh, Y hang essentially with a re-anchor for access and egress into the Y hang. Okay, so starting out with those two figure eights again. Now, one problematic situation that this has is it uses a lot of rope. So make sure that you have more than what you think you'll need um, as that is definitely a problem. Okay, next up here is I'm gonna bring this over. Obviously, if I was on aid or whatever, you'd probably pretty much be right here. Okay, at that point, this is pretty much where I'm gonna tie my Alpine butterfly. Now, if it was slings, it would be easy to do this because I'm on bolts. I'm naturally going to have a loose leg if I do that. So I'm just going to kind of put this where I want it. All right. I'm going to tie my Alpine butterfly there. <clears throat> okay. At that point, I can kind of come up and start working on these here. All right. And then I'm just going to tie that uh, figure eight on a bite on this side too. Now because I have different distances between um, the two bolts on this orientation here, right? You're going to see that there's a little bit of loose leg, a dead leg here. So I'm just going to try to clean that up a little bit. There we go. Okay. From there, then I can kind of come here. Nice thing about using an eight here is once you clip it in, okay, I can also adjust it easily. Now, you're probably asking me, ah, Mikey, why don't you just use an Alpine butterfly? Well, because an Alpine butterfly is not an end knot, termination knot. So yeah, let's use uh, use an alpine butterfly where they're supposed to be used. Um, okay, so now I have that, then I can start descending down these ropes. At that point, I can clip onto here, which naturally just brings this over to me. Cool. Great. At that point, I can start rigging in my re anchor. Okay. And then all you'd have to do is just let this go. You have the re anchor you transfer through your re-anchor and then down to the ground. For access to this area, you just do it reverse, tear it down the way that you set it up, okay? So here we go. You're gonna need a couple extra carabiners. Now, when it comes to rigging up re-anchors, it really depends on what you were trained. Um, I like to say how much, the question I get a lot in training is when you rig up re-anchors, how much loop or how much rope do I need? I like to say approximately one and a half times the width. So if this is one meter, then I need to make sure that I have about a meter and a half of rope to play into the loop. At the end of the day, there's no too much unless it's going to, you know, hinder your, your, the situation by coming in contact with something, but there's too little. So obviously in the, in, in this situation, this would be too little for sure, but 
for the purpose of this, um, just so you see what's going on, okay? But yeah, really, when it comes to rigging up re-anchors, if you look at it and you're like, hey, pay out another couple feet, it's not gonna hurt you, okay? All right, so now I have the second rope. I'm gonna try to match that up relatively similar. You wanna be professional, don't you? Okay, here we go, excellent. Okay, I only have one carabiner there, so make sure that you grab another carabiner. I'm gonna just put these in opposed gates like I say, unless it's a screw gate, it doesn't matter, okay? So there you have it. You have your Y hang essentially as this is pulling down. As you're loaded here, any single independent leg could fail um, and you don't have to worry about a pendulum of any sort. Um, but because that is you know, joined here, this is pulling on two strands here, two strands here, it's nice. And another positive about the BFK uh, scenario is that you're pulling on four strands equally, meaning that you're gonna have less rope stretch in the system. Um, when you only pull on two strands, you're pulling on two strands. You double the strands, less deflection. That's as simple as it gets, okay? So that's all I have for today. Thank you. All right, well, thank you very much for tuning in here. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Please let me know in the comments below if you've seen any of these setups, how you're doing it, and what you kind of think about this new, you know, train of thought, if you will. All right, if you like this episode, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe as it's right down here. Yep. And don't forget to hit the bell for notifications as I put out new content every Sunday. And you know it. Don't forget to follow us wherever you get your podcast. Until next time.